What's up everyone, it's Deltlead, and today we're going to be doing a side-by-side -side comparison of two of my favorite space games out there, Kerbal Space Program and Simple Rockets 2. Now, anyone who's watched my videos is well aware of what Simple Rockets 2 is, and if you don't know much about Simple Rockets 2, then you should definitely check out some of the videos I've done in the past before watching this one. Now, if you're familiar with Simple Rockets 2, but you've never heard of Kerbal Space Program, then you should definitely check out Scott Manley's videos on it. It's a very popular game and currently kind of the king of rocket simulators. And if you haven't heard of either, well then, what are you doing watching this video? You must be really out of the loop. Alright, now that you've gone back and watched a bunch of my other videos and Scott Manley's videos, and you're all caught up on what the hell I'm talking about, it's time to do an in-depth breakdown of these games. What they do that I like, what they do that I don't like, and which one of them is superior in my opinion. Now, before we start, it's worth pointing out that while Simple Rockets 2 is very similar to Kerbal Space Program, there's a lot that makes them different, and I would even go so far to say that, fundamentally, Simple Rockets 2 isn't even the same genre of game as Kerbal Space Program. I'm going to be breaking down these games based on a few categories. Physics simulation, which will be looking at the accuracy of physics modeling in the games, how they model orbital mechanics, how they model the atmosphere drag and lift, and how they model heat transfer in things like re-entry. Graphics, which will be looking at how pretty the games are. Now I'll be running both games at their maximum graphics settings and comparing the frame rates at the highest graphics settings to see how good they actually look. Availability, which will be comparing the cost of the games and what platforms you can get them on. Mods, which will be looking at the modding community for the games and what kind of content is available for them and how they enhance the game. And Gameplay, which will be looking at what there is to do in the game, what kind of progression is available, and what kind of mechanics and features are in the game that make it unique to the other. I'm also only going to be looking at the unmodded stock games. Now, there is a lot of community content available for both of these games that enhance certain features, but for this analysis, we're just going to be looking at the base game that a new player would be looking at after just installing it. I'm also not going to look at the DLC for Kerbal Space Program, which means the Breaking Ground DLC will be off-limits in this analysis. Partially this is because I hate the idea of DLC and the idea that your game isn't complete and you have to buy other sections of it, and partially because I don't own the DLC and I have no idea what's in it. Both Kerbal Space Program and Simple Rockets 2 use what is called a patched conics model. Simply put, patched conics use what are called spheres of influence to calculate the orbital path of your spacecraft. When you are within a sphere of influence, your spacecraft bases its orbit exclusively off of the force of gravity of that celestial body which you are in, ignoring the other celestial bodies that would be exerting an influence on the craft. This reduces complicated orbital models with multiple bodies down to a simple two-body system, with one body being the planet you're orbiting and the other body being your spacecraft. This allows us to use a simple and solvable two-body model using Isaac Newton's original equations to calculate every orbital parameter for our craft. When our craft leaves the sphere of influence of one body, it reverts to the sphere of influence of the parent body. For example, we launch a rocket from Drew. While it is within the home planet's sphere of influence, it uses the conic model of that planet and nothing else. But, as it leaves the home planet's sphere of influence, it reverts to the larger sphere of influence of the sun that the planet is orbiting. Going in the other direction, if your rocket is launched from the home planet and put on a trajectory to the moon, it will start in the SOI of the home planet, then as it enters the SOI of the moon, it will ignore the gravity of the parent planet and only base its orbit on the gravity of the moon. This is a very surface level explanation of how patched conics works, but I'll be doing a more in-depth video on how patched conics and n-body modeling work and what the advantages of each are. This patched conic system of modeling orbital mechanics is an okay approximation of orbital mechanics, as it allows for easily solved analytical solutions to Newton's equations, but it misses some of the nuances of orbital mechanics. For instance, Lagrange points are totally impossible in a patched conic modeling system. Now, Lagrange points are special points in space where, in a three-body system, the bodies remain motionless relative to the other objects. Usually this means that the gravitational fields of the larger two bodies cancel out at a specific point, resulting in zero net force on the third object. Now, these Lagrange points can be viewed as flat points on a topographical map of your solar system. If we modeled 3D space as a 2D plane, with the third dimension being the slope and magnitude of the gravitational field, we can see very clearly these flat spots, where if you placed a ball there, it wouldn't roll down the slope. Lagrange points are very important for space exploration and have a lot of cool uses that we just can't take advantage of in either of these games. 
Stepping away from orbital mechanics, the atmospheric physics simulation is where these two games start to diverge. Kerbal Space Program is, well, it's not particularly accurate. The atmosphere is slippery and the aircraft rarely ever stall or have to deal with turbulent flight effects. Your rockets can pitch wildly without catching a ton of drag and slowing down or spiraling out of control. Simple Rockets 2 isn't without its faults, but it does a lot better at modeling the effects of atmosphere on a craft than Kerbal Space Program does. Simple Rockets 2 also has better drag modeling. Both games do a pretty good job of modeling heat on parts. While they aren't perfect models, they do a good job of showing what re-entry heat would look like and how it would damage parts. Heat shields in both games operate using a blade of materials, which is pretty accurate to how most heat shields are designed nowadays. A blade of heat shields work by allowing material to burn off, taking the thermal energy generated by re-entry and dissipating it in the atmosphere. Now, with all of this being taken into consideration, Simple Rockets 2 just has better physics simulation between the two games. While they're pretty equal in terms of how they model orbital mechanics, Simple Rockets 2 has a much more solid physics simulation for atmosphere, drag, and I think maybe a slight edge in how it manages heat damage and thermal control. While both games are beautiful in their own right, there isn't a lot of room for discussion here. Simple Rockets 2 is hands down a prettier game than Kerbal Space Program. The bloom and reflection effects, part shadows, craft lights, all of these visual features are better executed and tailor-made for some stunning cinematic shots. Especially with the new update that has just come out for Simple Rockets 2, which includes ambient occlusion, giving crafts global shadows that enhance the realistic feeling of the game. When you set the graphics to their max, it is just drop-dead gorgeous. Simple Rockets 2 is also better optimized than Kerbal Space Program and runs a lot smoother. Since it's designed to run on mobile devices, it's made to be very efficient and low on processing power relative to the kind of game that it is. There just isn't much you can say that's going to change my mind here. Sure, there are some mods for Kerbal Space Program that make it more appealing, but since I'm only comparing the base games for this video, Simple Rockets 2 is going to take the graphics category. Again, Simple Rockets 2 wins out in this category hands down. Simple Rockets 2 is available on Steam for PC, Mac, and Linux computers. It's also available on any mobile device through Google Play Store for Android users and through the App Store for Apple users. Simple Rockets 2 is not available on any consoles. Kerbal Space Program is available on Steam, as well as both Xbox and PlayStation consoles, but Kerbal Space Program is not available on mobile devices. So they both have platforms that the other isn't available on, and they're both available on computers. That's cool, but it doesn't really define a clear winner until you compare how much the games cost. Simple Rockets 2 is only $14.99 on Steam, and $4.99 on the App Store and Google Play Store. Kerbal Space Program is a whopping $39.99 on all platforms, Steam, the Microsoft Store, and the PlayStation Store. Don't get me wrong, I think these prices are actually very fair for both games. Kerbal Space Program is a fully developed game and it's feature complete. Simple Rockets 2 is still in early access and has a lot more that needs to be added. Still, the low price and availability on mobile devices makes it a lot easier for new players to purchase and try out. And since pretty much everyone nowadays has a mobile device that can run games on it, Simple Rockets 2 is pretty much available to everyone. Kerbal Space Program is famous for its modding community. Scott Manley's Interstellar Quest series in Kerbal Space Program highlights some of the coolest and most unique mods that are available in the game. Kerbal Space Program also has a lot of support for those mods, so they're regularly updated and maintained. Civil Rockets 2, on the other hand, is a newer game without such a huge following, so there just aren't as many people making mods for it. That being said, there are some really solid ones available that do add some cool features and extra customization to the game, but they just can't compare to the sheer volume of options that players have for modding Kerbal Space Program. Overall, Kerbal Space Program definitely takes this category. As I said before, there are a ton of different features that make Simple Rockets 2 and Kerbal Space Program very different games. Let's start with what they have in common. In both games, you can build spacecraft and airplanes and explore a model solar system. You can come up with just about any design you want and use the in-game tools to test and fly those creations. But here's where they're different. Kerbal Space Program is a lot like Legos. You've got a bunch of pre-made parts that you can click together in a given arrangement that are allowed. These parts have some minor customization options but are mostly fixed. 
For instance, the fuel tanks can't be resized and can only be recolored in a few different ways. Engines and Kerbal Space programs are even less customizable, with the only thing that can really be changed is the throttle limiter. Simple Rockets 2 is a totally different story. Instead of a long list of different but uncustomizable parts, we have a short list of entirely procedural parts. Fuel tank shapes and sizes are totally customizable. Engine size, bell length, throat diameter, chamber pressure, and fuel cycle can all be customized, as well as what types of fuel the engines use. Solar panels can be resized and customized to change the number of panels in an array or the texture. And every part has multiple different textures or designs that can be changed, as well as a different color and other effects that can be added to create absolutely anything you can imagine. Simple Rockets 2 also has an in-game visual programming language called Vizzy. Vizzy allows players to create custom commands and programs to control their crafts or to take advantage of more complex mathematics in-game to enhance their craft's usability. Auto launch and landing scripts, pre-programmed launch windows, interactive command consoles, all of these things add a whole new layer of dynamic user input. Players from beginner to expert can create all sorts of absolutely mind-blowing things in-game with these tools. And let's not forget the magnum opus of all of its features, Planet Studio. Players can create procedurally generated custom planets, structures, and launch centers, then create custom systems and put those planets in them. Simple Rockets 2 has a ton of user-created planets and systems that players can download and play with as they please. Kerbal Space Program may not be as customizable, and it may not have an in-game coding language, but it does have one major thing that I think it can hold over Simple Rockets 2, and it gives it a clear edge. It has a campaign mode. While both games are considered physics sandboxes, Kerbal Space Program actually has a form of in-game progression that takes it from just a sandbox and makes it into a real game. The campaign mode is really well developed and has a lot of features, from scientific experiments that your crews can conduct in flight, to a well planned out tech tree that creates a natural progression from simple crafts and missions to more complex designs and bigger missions. For all the cool customization, parts, and features of Simple Rockets 2, it's still just a sandbox. Now very creative players can find innumerable ways to entertain themselves, but without that spark of engineering drive, most players will get bored pretty quickly with the game. Without an external motivation to problem solve and progress, many players won't get much further than making a few airplanes and exploring the moon in Simple Rockets 2. For that reason, even with all the other cool features in Simple Rockets 2, I have to give the gameplay category to Kerbal Space Program. Now remember, all of these categories are subjective. Some people may value good graphics over good gameplay, so it's difficult to objectively rank these two games. They're also very different games, and I believe they're trying to do very different things. Here's what it ultimately comes down to. Kerbal Space Program is the better game. With better gameplay and modding capabilities, it is a more enjoyable progression experience. But Simple Rockets 2 is the better space simulator. There are pros and cons to both, and I obviously have a preference given my channel's content, but they're both excellent and I highly recommend them. It all comes down to what kind of experience do you want. Do you want to play with preset parts and progress through a dynamic campaign mode? Well, then Kerbal Space Program is the game for you. Or do you want to use tons of tools to create incredibly detailed, beautiful, and highly functional spacecraft? Then Simple Rockets 2 takes the cake. Personally, I prefer Simple Rockets 2 to Kerbal Space Program. I think it is a lot easier to learn and adapt to quickly. The building tools are more intuitive and easier to use. The flight controls are simpler and they're a lot easier to do, especially with space missions where you want to set a heading and then let the rocket follow it. It's also a lot cheaper, which is a big thing in my opinion, and since you can play it on your mobile device, it makes it a lot more convenient for playing on the go. If you're on a long plane or a car ride and you have some time to kill and want to just sit down, relax, and really think your way through a design process. For all those reasons, I personally prefer Simple Rockets too, but there are a lot of things that I wish it had. For instance, they are planning on adding a campaign mode to the game, but they haven't really set a date for it, and it's not a huge priority for them. I also wish that they would lean more into the physics simulation and use n-body models for their physics simulation instead of patched conics. I like the patched conic system, but there's a lot that it leaves out and I wish they would upgrade to the more complicated one. I do understand why they choose to use patched conics over n-body, but I know it's been done in the past through Kerbal Space Program in mods, and I know that they could do it if they wanted to.
Well, that does it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you think I missed something in my comparison, leave it in a comment below. I love hearing what you guys have to say, and if there's enough feedback, I'll do another in-depth comparison of the games. I'm also planning on doing a comparison of Simple Rockets 2 and Simple Planes, which is another game by John Drew. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.